Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. Hey folks, I'm Mike and this is Ink Dependence and today we are looking at a pen. It is this pen right here. Uh, this is the Franklin Christoph Model 66. Uh, it is clearly eyedroppered and uh, I almost never eyedropper pens, but uh, this one is uh, totally worth it. And actually this is not my pen, this is my wife's. Uh, so Audrey uh, lent me this pen to check out for a little while. I gotta get it back to her. She's like, hey, where's that 66 I waited so long for? So um, this is the reason she had to wait for it because this is in the, uh, the antique glass finish. Uh, which you can find on the uh, Franklin Christoph stock room. If you go to Franklin Christ Franklin Christoph.com and go to their stock room, uh, you'll see this one and also the Pocket 66 and the 65, and they'll be in a couple of different uh, a couple of different finishes. So you'll have the antique glass, which is this one, which uh, some people call colloquially the Coke bottle pen, as you can see. Uh, there we go. Get the light just right. You can see it's got a bit of a green tinge to it. Uh, maybe on the cap, it's looking a little bit better. Yeah, you get a little bit of a green tinge. So this has got the uh, kind of antique Coke bottle look to it. The other is Italian Ice, which is also a clear uh, meth methyl acetate acrylic, is what Audrey wrote down for me. Uh, and uh, it's got a little bit of a blue tinge to it. So uh, anyway, it comes in this little pouch. It doesn't come with a box, really. I think you can get a box. In fact, I know they have boxes, but this pouch is better, actually. You can buy these on the site. and see it's got a little lining in there, and it's leather on the outside, and it's got a uh, little Franklin, it's got the logo. A little, hmm, yeah, I can't get the light. Anyway, they have a little logo, oh, there it is, there we go. A little logo stamped there. I got the Franklin Christoph and the Four Diamonds on the other side. You can get this on the site for like 20 bucks, or you can buy a pen and it comes with, so hey, 20 bucks for free with the pen. And uh, it fits in there quite nicely. Zip it up, boom, your pen doesn't get all scratched up by whatever else you've got sitting around. It'll hold a couple of pens if they're smaller, like if you have two uh, like acrylic pens or something like that, you can put them in together. Uh, I wouldn't put acrylic and metal in together just because you don't want them banging around together. All right, so let's talk about uh, some things about this pen. First off, uh, it's a relatively simple pen uh, as, um, as these things go. If you look at some of the other pens that Franklin Christoph has uh, on offer, and I actually don't have uh, any of those pens with the bands on them right here with me. Uh, nope, I don't have them here. They're elsewhere. Uh, but I have a 1901, and that has bands on the top and on the bottom. I have the, uh, the 40 Panther, which has got a band around the middle. Uh, actually, a triple band is kind of a special one. And those are all separate pieces, and if you go to the show, you can see a sort of a broke down pen, uh, or an exploded, sometimes they call them, uh, pen, where it shows how they, you know, how they join together in all the little pieces. It's a bit like a Lego or like an Ikea. I built a massive Ikea set of bookshelves the other day, so uh, my office is a mess. You can see there's like boxes behind me and stuff, but anyway, um, there we go. That's better. Uh, so, you know, there we go. Uh, it's, uh, this is more simple. It only has really like three parts, not kind of the nib, feed, and collar, because I, I guess, okay, fine. The five parts, the six six parts, six. Check my math. Six parts. Um, so you have the uh, the cap, which is a very nice little cap. It has uh, big fat threads here. Uh, it has a nice conical shape there. So when you thread it together, the threads are actually on this end of the section. So they're right near where your fingers will be if you're holding it like I am right now, which is very close to the end, very close to the nib. Uh, and I tend to hold my pins like this. Sometimes I'll hold them back further, but generally pretty close to the, to the nib. Uh, and even then, the sort of join, or I guess the transition, I should say, come on lighting, goodness. The transition between the section and the threads, come on, yeah, I go this way. Yeah, it's a little bit better. Between the section and the threads is very smooth. So if you run your fingers this way, you're not gonna feel it. And it feels like, I don't know. I, mean, I guess you can kind of feel it, but it's not sharp at all. It's very, very smooth and gradual, and I liked it a lot. Uh, that, what that also means is that when you cap this sucker, you, uh, let me turn off my sound over here. Yep. Turn my sound here. Yep, good. So, uh, what it means when you cap this, this is all the air that's in there. Uh, it's not much. So, in uh, some other caps, you'll have a lot of air volume. Uh, this one, for example, is a lot of air volume around it. You get like this much. Uh, even with the uh, the pilots, you get a fair amount. Of this has a nice inner cap in it, which is cool. Uh, but this kind of serves the same purpose as the inner cap deal, which is that it limits exposure to air, it limits evaporation, uh, and it'll keep your nib wetter longer. And this is a, uh, a pretty small nib. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Uh, the other part is this section here, which, as I said, already ha you know has the, the big fat uh, Acme threads here. These are very smooth. Also, doesn't take very much to uncap it. It's a pretty, pretty quick uncap, which Audrey demands because she likes to write some notes and then move on and then write some more notes and then come back. So uh, you want to do that. But it's a very smooth, 
very sort of affirmative feeling. It's not, it doesn't feel like it's going to come loose. You have to give it a little bit of a tug to make it come loose. So that's cool. Uh, the only like issue I have with it a little bit is that if you ha happen to hold your pen pretty far back, you can see, I think, in the video around here, you can see the step between the section, this bit, and the barrel. So I'm not going to take the section off because it's got silicone grease in there, and also, frankly, because it has a flat side on this side. Oh, good, yeah, you can see that pretty well. And that's the only place, well, the only two places where there's anything written on this pen or engraved. This is Franklin Kristoff 66. If I hold it like this, you're not going to be able to see it. Oh, there you go, maybe a little bit. Yeah. Uh, the transparency of the pen and the lighting and all that sort of stuff makes that kind of unlikely, so there you go. All right. Um, but uh, last night I was writing with this thing and I was like, man, it really bothers me that the flat side is not going with the nib. So uh, you could do that by unscrewing the, sec the, um, the nib unit and putting it in the right place. But as this is eyedropper, it's got silicone grease there and it's got silicone grease in here. I'm like, I don't really want to deal with that. So I just messed with the section. Um, and I didn't get my fingers uh, inky at all, which is kind of shocking, honestly. Uh, I, I finally got those lined up and now I don't want to move it. So I'm not going to take it off. Uh, this is the section and then the rest of it's just this nice barrel. And you can see down there at the bottom, yeah, good, good job focusing. There's a little bit of a divot there you can see where they were drilling it out and it's very smooth. And then the inside of this is roughed up just a little bit, I think to give it sort of a, a nice translucency. I mean, it's still transparent, but it's, it's more foggy than anything else. I think they do that in, in some special way. I don't know what the process is, but I'm sure there is a process. Uh, I haven't asked Scott what that is, so. Anyway, so the effect is that you can see this nice, uh, huge volume of ink. It's something like, uh, uh, how many mils is it? Four mils? I want to say it's, it holds like four milliliters of ink, which if you get samples from like Anderson pens, uh, this will hold more than one sample, right? If you get samples from Goulet, this will hold two samples worth of ink. So uh, there you go. So quite a lot of ink. Uh, let's talk about the nib right quick. Put that down. Uh, oh, the other place where there's any branding at all is on the tip of the cap. In fact, I can't even really see it on my screen as I'm trying to show this to you, but you'll have to take my word for it, or actually even go to the blog. If you're not on the blog now, go to the blog, uh, where it has this, uh, it'll show you what it is. And it has the Franklin Christoph logo and the four diamonds, but they're really unobtrusive. And I didn't even notice them until I was taking really close up pictures the other day. I can get it just right. No, I'm not gonna. If you see it, it's by accident. Yeah, maybe there a little bit. Anyway, um, so there you go, that's the cap. Uh, let's talk about this nib a little bit. Um, one of the things about this particular style of pen is that this was the pen that they developed to use for testers because if you go to shows, uh, you'll notice that they have like 40 different nibs and that's not really, that's not actually an exaggeration. They might have more than 40. If you count the SIG nibs, they have significantly more than 40, I think. Uh, so lots and lots of nibs, um, different sizes, five nibs, six nibs, uh, gold nibs of every type. You have the regular style, uh, fine, medium, broad, double broad? Mm, maybe they have a double broad, I don't know, don't quote me on that. If they don't have it, that's fine, I just made a mistake. Uh, and then they have gold ones and all of those, and then they have all the Mike Masayama grinds, which are, uh, you know, your various italics and your stubs and your needle point. This is a needle point. So, this started off as an HPS, that is high performance steel, that's what they call their steel nibs, uh, extra fine, you can probably see the EF just right there. Uh, and uh, now it is a needle point, so if you look at it uh, closely, you see that it is very, very small. Now this isn't the finest needle point you're gonna find. If you're used to something like a Japanese, like a full-on needle point, or those crazy sailor nibs that I can't pronounce, but they're just so small, they're unwritable. Uh, unwritable, unwritable, unwrite with -able? I don't know, I can't write with them. They're too darn small. Uh, but they're gonna be smaller than this. But, all right, recording kick up. Uh, this is a very small nib. It's not as small as the Japanese extra extra fines and that sort of thing. Uh, but it is very, very fine. It is very, very smooth. Uh, I think Jim Rouse, who is the nib guy over at Franklin Kristoff, went through all of them, uh, all of the uh, Masayama needle points to find the best one, and then he tuned it up a little bit for Audrey. And I don't write well with an, an extra fine nib like that. Oh, there's, there's, uh, there's Katy Purry over there. Yeah, that's my other cat. That's another animal that lives here. She's watching birds. I have a little suet block out there for her. All right. Um, so this is, uh, you know, very nicely done, and I'll do a little writing sample with it here in a minute, but uh, here's the thing, I'm not good at writing with an extra, extra, uh, this sort of needle point, and I'm not good at writing with, uh, like, big fat music nibs and stuff, that's Audrey's territory, and it's not mine, uh, however, I will be showing you some of her, uh, her written stuff, so she's much better at it than I am. Uh, it's going to take her a million years to get through all this ink. This ink, by the way, I think... I'm almost certain is uh, Franklin Christoph Black Cherry. And if you look through the channel or if you look through the blog, you'll be able to find a review of this from a while ago. Last year, maybe. I Yeah, I want to say last year. Last year at DC, I think I got these. So it'll be shortly after that. So September or August, something like that. No, 
uh, September, November, something like that. Uh, but anyway, check it out. This is a very cool ink. It's kind of a not quite maroon, not quite brown, not quite black, but it's a very, uh, very nice ink. All right, so let's uh, switch gears and look at the uh, look at the writing sample and stuff. Okay, this is going to be the writing sample and uh, sort of more pen close-up stuff here. I'm gonna maneuver around on my tripod. All right. Okay, so here we are. Uh, this is that pen again, and maybe against the. There we go. That looks good. So against this white paper, you can really tell uh, the uh, the sort of green tint that this pen has, and sort of a frosty look up here on the uh, on the cap. See much better there. Yeah, good. Now uh, this camera seems to be doing a lot better than the one on my uh, computer did. All right, so let's have a little bit of a writing sample. I will zoom in for this. Uh, and also, as I said, please be forgiving with my handwriting. Uh, I am writing around a tripod with a pen that uses a nib I am not that good at. It. So uh, this is a Franklin Christoph. Number 66, uh, it's called the Stabilis, which is Latin, uh, Scott likes to go with Latin names for pins, uh, Stabilis st is uh, Latin for steadfast or sturdy or um, unwavering perhaps, so there you go, all right, uh, and there you are, so that's that, uh, it is inked up with, uh, what is this stuff called, Black Cherry, inked with uh, black cherry. And as you can see, there's no problem with this pen starting up. Even just the lightest touch uh, gives a pretty nice line. Um, I tend to give it a little bit more uh, you know, pressure, just because I'm not used to uh, using this uh, tiny nib. But uh, it writes perfectly well in every direction. I haven't had any problems with it at all. And it's never failed to start up. So this is uh, a pen that I'm, uh, and a set of nibs that I'm like, yeah, good, well done. Uh, and in fact, that's one of the things I really like about all the Franklin Christoph pens. Even though this is not the cheapest pen, uh, the pen prices, let's see, I have written down here, uh, they range from, uh, let's see, six, uh, $169.50. That's the price on the website right now for the HPS. Uh, that's just the standard high performance steel nibs up to uh, uh, what's the top end, which would be uh, uh, Masayama nib with uh, in gold was uh, let's see, two seventy nine fifty. So at that point, you've got a lot of competition. Uh, so gold Masayama. Uh, at the 279, you have a whole lot of competition with this pen. Uh, there's a lot of like really expensive stuff up in that region. And that's what the that right there, by the way, is what that uh, flat side is for. Oh, kept rolling. Got a little bit of a tilt to my desk. Uh, you've got, uh, I mean, you've got Pro Gears in that range. You've got uh, another Sailor, which is the uh, that's the 1911 Large, is probably in that range somewhere. Uh, I have nothing else that's in that range, honestly, because I'm pretty. Uh, uh, I guess this is actually up in that range. Not quite, but kind of. This is a Bexley Phoenix. Uh, it's kind of a special run pen. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't really have too many things up in that range. So at the gold, like Masayama Gold Nib range, this is a pretty expensive pen. Uh, I hear those nibs are great, although I really haven't used them. So I don't know uh, firsthand, although uh, I'm sure they're great. Uh, so there you go. So not the cheapest pen. That's like, that's kind of the biggest con. Uh, another con for you might be that it doesn't come with a clip. You can't put a clip on this pen. There's just no place to put one. Uh, I, I mean, I guess you could like kind of put one around here, but then you wouldn't be able to write. No, no, no clip for this pen, uh, which is why it has this flat side, which kind of keeps it from rolling unless you have a steep angle to your desk. I think mine must not be level. It kind of kept rolling, but there you go. Um, so no clip. Also, there's a long waiting list. So, uh, you're going to have to wait a while to get your hands on one of these, even if you order it. Oh, I've been shaking it up too much. I got a little bit of ink in the cap there. Let's go ahead and recapture that. Yes, get back in the nib. Yes, oh, perfect. Sucked it right up. Um, I, uh, uh, oh, if you put your name on the waiting list now, and the waiting list isn't up as at the time I'm recording this video, uh, then you'll still have to wait like 10 weeks or something to get your pen. So these are not very common, which is kind of a pro, but also means you're going to have to, to, to wait. Uh, also, the needle point is not going to be for everybody, says Audrey. So let's take a look at her uh, writing samples here. 
Uh, um, let's see. Come here. There. All right. So uh, this is her writing sample. You'll see more of these if you look on the blog. I'll have uh, I have you know close-ups of this. So I can get a little bit closer. I can. So uh, very very smooth nib on this. Is she's very psyched about this smooth nib, and she loves that it's a uh, a needle point. She's a big fan of that. Uh, this is uh, methyl acrylate. Uh, meth acrylate. I don't know. I can't say things. It's an acrylic pen. Uh, I'm not the uh, chemist that she is. Uh, the dimensions are on there. Cap length is uh, six and a quarter inches. It's actually supposed to be like 6.3. Uh, the thing is that my caliper is actually slightly smaller than that. It only goes to six inches. So I had to sort of eyeball it with a ruler. So it's probably 6.3 and I'm just a little bit off. Uh, and cap length about six inches, which is just at what my, uh, my caliper will take. Uh, and then, you know, if you uh, post it, it's a little bit longer. You can post this pen actually very well uh, if you just sort of put it in there. Post really deeply, post very securely. It's not coming off accidentally. I mean, you could sort of twirl it around by that. I don't recommend that at all, but I guess you could. Uh, so, yeah, it posts very well. And the cap is very, very light. There's not really any weight here because it's a tiny little cap. Um, so if you're a person who likes to post your pen, uh, do it. Post that cap. Um, and also, I haven't noticed that there's any kind of scratching. This is a very durable feeling pen. I mean, one thing I haven't said is that it feels really good in your hand. Like, I don't know, it's it's much bigger than you think it would be, you know? Uh, let's see, let's put it up against a couple of other pens just for comparison purposes. Let's throw this out of the way for a sec. Uh, here it is next to, square these uh, these bottom ends up a little bit. This is it next to a uh, Twisby 700, the VAC. And you can see that the vac is quite a bit shorter, and the vac is generally thought to be a fairly large pen, and this is this is capped even. So there you go. Uh, on the other side, let's go ahead and put this one. This is a Pilot Custom 74. Uh, let's see, here's that Sailor I had earlier, which is uh, the large 1911. I hear that's about the same size as a Mont Blanc 149. Uh, I don't have any Mont Blanc, so I can't test that. It won't sit straight. But this is just by far the largest pen that I have. Here's one that more. Oop, that a lot of people have, I'm sure. This is the Lamy All Star, which is just a little tiny thing compared to that. Um, so yeah, not uh, it's not a small pen. It's a big pen. It's long, but it's not particularly heavy. I mean, it, it's all uh, it's all um, uh, acrylic. So and there's no metal parts in here at all except for the nib. So it's really light. Uh, so don't worry about it being over heavy for your hand. I don't think uh, my wife likes very you know, sort of light, much lighter pens than I do. And she's got no problem uh, using this at all. So, uh, there you go. So, as far as other stuff, uh, let's see, uh, the weight, 21.6 grams capped, uh, 18.36 uncapped. I, I don't really, I don't do grams. Uh, Audrey weighted on a very fancy scale at work, so uh, I'm sure those are right, but, and that's filled with ink, by the way. Uh, but uh, I don't know really what those mean. It feels like, uh, What's it similar to? Oh no, I'm dropping cans. Uh, what's it similar to? Pro Gear? I don't know, the Pro Gear might actually be a little bit... Oh, it's about the same as this Pro Gear, which is the uh, regular, like, large Pro Gear. Now, it's about the same weight, even though it's much longer. I don't know, I feel like the Pro Gear might be heavier. Yeah, it definitely feels heavier. Yeah. So it's lighter than a Pro Gear. So if you know what a Pro Gear feels like, it's lighter than that. Now, it's certainly lighter than these other pens, like, you know, the Twisby 700 and stuff. It's much, it's lighter than that. And um, so, even though it's longer by a good bit, uh, it's definitely lighter. So, you know, a very light pen, but not so light that you can't use it, I think. Uh, I, and I have, you know, big gorilla hands. So, uh, for me, I like a little bit of weight. This could maybe do with a little bit more weight for me, but it's so long and it's got such a nice diameter. I mean, look at the diameter on this pen. There we go. There we go, that's head on. This is a pretty, it's a pretty girthy pen right there. Large diameter around the middle, especially. Of course, on the section, it's smaller, but um, certainly good enough. Did I do the section? Oh, I did, 10.2 millimeters at the section is the diameter right there. So good, I forgot that I, I must've been holding it there when I was showing it a second ago. But 10 millimeters is actually my, uh, or 10 and a half ish is actually my sort of preferred uh, diameter for sections. So this is kind of perfect. Uh, like I said, I'm, uh, like I said with Audrey, I'm gonna probably get another one. So maybe I'll get the antique glass one, and we'll just have a pair, uh, or maybe we'll get a 65. I don't know. Uh, these were, uh, as I, I don't remember if I said it or not, but I'm gonna say it again anyway now. Uh, these were developed to be the tester pens for Franklin Christoph's crazy huge uh, section selection of inks, uh, inks nibs, so that when you're at a show, you can test them all out. 
uh, and people liked it so much. Of course, those are all black. If you uh, go for get one of these on the, the site right now at franklin christophcom you will find just the black one. Uh, there are more being made. They're going to bring back some other colors, and of course, the DC Pen Show is coming up, and I bet they'll have some, uh, some crazy colors for that, because they always do. Uh, but uh, this is in black right now, and of course the tester pens are all in black if you played with those. And if you played with those, you've used this pen. It's the same pen. So, uh, there's that. Uh, but anyway, it was so popular as a tester pen, it was like the first pen that people used from Franklin Christoph because they used when they were testing to see what nib they liked. People said, you know, can I just buy this? And they said, well, no, we only have those. And then they decided to make, you know, this pen. And the 65, which is the smaller version that they used for the... For the uh, uh, number five nibs. So there you go. You can get your uh, choice of size and nib. The the number the 65 is a little bit smaller than this. I think it's like uh, this long maybe. It's just smaller and it's got the number five nib. It's a smaller pen overall. So there you go. All right. So this has been the Franklin Christoph number 66 Stabilis uh, Steadfast. Go find this at Franklin Christoph, uh, franklin-christoph.com. Uh, anywhere else? I can't think of it anywhere else you'll be able to find this. They really only sell their pens through their site. There are a couple other places in the world that uh, sell a pen or two, or you might see find some that have, um, you know, a custom pen for them, like this one for the Andersons. Uh, this is the model, uh, what is this, the 3? I always get the 3 and the 2 mixed up. Yeah, this is the 3 uh, in the Anderson blue. This has the same kind of threads down at the bottom, but it's not quite as smooth as the uh, 66. I think this is an improvement. But, uh, you know, you can find them some places, but you're not going to find this one anywhere but franklinchristoff.com. So if you want one of these, go there and find it. Uh, see if you can get on the waiting list. Keep an eye out on the stock room uh, like a hawk trying to get on that waiting list. Be aware that it's going to cost, uh, I don't know, this much-ish and that it's going to be a wait. But uh, also that you'll get a great pen at the end of the day and it's going to be backed up by... Uh, uh, Franklin Christoph's stellar customer service. These are lifetime warranty pens. If anything happens to this pen, uh, like if anything goes wrong with it, they will help you out. They will fix it up. Uh, they are great. So uh, there you go. That's enough of that. Uh, this was uh, this is this is not a loaner. Well, it's kind of a loaner for my wife. This is not one that I got from the vendor or anything for review. Uh, this is our pen. Uh, so uh, you know, while I am friends with the Franklin Christoph folks, uh, Scott and Jim and Dan and all them. Um, uh, that doesn't that does not sway my review as uh, they will certainly tell you themselves uh, so there you go all right I'm Mike this is ink dependence if you like what you saw here please go over to uh, www.patreon.com slash ink dependence to find out how you can help support the blog uh, go to franklin christophcom to find Franklin Christoph pens and uh, if you're watching this on YouTube leave a, leave a comment leave a like if you like this uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet hey hit subscribe because all that stuff helps other people find these reviews and that's cool I don't make money off these reviews I only make money off of patreon uh, so don't worry about that but uh, the likes and stuff are what bloggers live off of comments man we love comments even if it's just like hey cool review or man your voice is annoying I mean that, that last one that's kind of mean you could just like be not hurtful that's cool uh, but uh, there you go so that's it I'm Mike uh, peace out